Why is it important to advocate for girls in STEM? There are so many statistics and studies out there that show there is a significant gap of women in STEM careers compared to men. By closing this gap and making it smaller, we are giving an abundance and more opportunities to various careers in the STEM fields. This also helps create more diverse work environments and also limit the bias when it comes to the different types of perspectives when working on various projects in these spaces. For us as educators, we have the opportunity to inspire our young students, especially girls in our education space, to bring to light these amazing opportunities that are out there, specifically in STEM. And our guest today definitely has that same passion as we do in this elementary STEM space. Today, we are hearing from Alexandrina Satnoyanu, and we first connected over on Instagram. And what is so amazing about this virtual world is, well, we've never met in person, and she's all the way in Lithuania, and we have the opportunity to connect and chat on there. And she is also a member of my STEM Teacher Bookshelf membership. And when I had her in on a call, she was so amazing. It was the middle of the night for for her. But just hearing her story and her passion and what she is doing, advocating for girls in STEM is absolutely amazing. And I knew that I needed to have her as a guest on this podcast. Alexandrina is a gender equality expert and communications professional, and the work that she is doing is so important for not only girls in her community, but her own children. She is the mother of two. One of them is an adult and one of them still is a child. And it is so amazing to hear all of the things that she has done to raise her girls where one of her daughters, her adult child, is actually in the STEM fields today, where her daughter is an aerospace engineer and also a pilot. Likewise, Alexandrina is doing amazing work for her younger daughter to advocate for her in STEM and also is starting up and continuing a STEM club for her daughter and girls at her school to expose them to lots of different ways to collaborate, critically think, and get excited about STEM. Alexandrina finds her inspiration from her experience of gender studies and also her experience as a mother and providing those opportunities in the STEM and STEAM space where we can close that gap when it comes to women in STEM and make a positive difference. She is working on so many more projects that I am mentioning on here. So when you are done listening to this episode, make sure to go and check out her bio, which will be linked in the show notes because her full story and also the things that she'll be describing today is absolutely amazing and powerful and also inspirational to help us as educators and also other parents who are out there listening to this, how we can make STEM more accessible for all children, but specifically girls in this space. I am so excited for you to listen to this episode. So let's jump on in and get inspired. Welcome to the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast, a show that'll help you with lesson ideas, systems, and actionable tips to apply to your classroom. I am your host, Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current STEM teacher and coach. With over a decade of experience teaching and a master's degree in STEM leadership, I am here to coach you throughout the year to help you gain back more time to create innovative experiences for your students. Grab your earbuds and let's get started. Well, thank you so much, Alexandrina, for being here today. We have connected over on social media, and you send me some blog posts. And um, I know that you are a listener of the podcast and even joined in our STEM Teacher Bookshelf community. And I'm so glad that you're here as a guest because when I knew what you were doing was so impactful and powerful. But when I heard you speak about what you're doing, uh, advocating for girls in STEAM, and we'll get into that, 
Um, but just like hearing your story, just a little snapshot in our book club um, call. I knew I had to have you as a guest. And then side note, I'm grabbing your daughter for some some other secret project <laughs> coming up. Um, but I'm really curious as to you have such a big background in the business world and everything that you've done. How did you get into the actual work of advocating for girls in STEM or STEAM? Yes. <laughs> Steam is uh, what I uh, prefer. Um, so thank you so much, Naomi, for your invite and having me here. Uh, you know me. I'm really passionate about uh, STEAM education. And I have to thank you and the amazing content that you are putting up for deepening my interest and knowledge into STEAM. Actually, my background is in uh, gender equality. I graduated from gender studies, and I think that's the start uh, with my interest in, in STEAM, having access to the evidence and having uh, seeing that there are not enough uh, women professionals working in science, technology, engineering, arts, uh, math all together, um, actually um, made me uh, become more of an advocate. I am of a curious nature, always um uh, passionate about scientific discoveries. I think I got this from my father and from my mom, the appreciation for math. Uh, she was a seamstress. So basically, uh, thanks to her measurements and calculations, she was making dresses. And I've witnessed this uh, in my childhood. So I think because we do not have enough uh, women working in, in these areas, we are not yet at 40% uh, gender balance, then there is not this critical mass uh, that uh, would help them push through the innovations and take advantage of the existing technology. So the work that they are doing uh, does not actually end up uh, representing uh, different uh, realities and needs of, of women. And I can give a very trivial example. I think many of us women uh, passing through the airports were queuing at the toilet. Yes, you have two toilets for women, two toilets for men. But the reality is that we need more time. Um, this is a physiological reality. And sometimes due to our caring responsibilities, we also come in with with children. So that takes us even more time. But maybe there are not enough women architects to reflect on these needs. And there are maybe not enough women in the decision making positions to actually approve the constructions of two extra toilets that would be solving these needs. So I guess this is a very simple, uh, out of everyone's realities type of an example of why we need more women in STEAM. That is a great example and so true. I actually was just at the airport last night, but I even listened to this book. It's not a STEM book, but it's great. It's called Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, who was the um, CEO yeah. of Facebook. Super it's great. great book. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And she talks about that in her book. She's not an engineer. She has a STEM job, uh, but she advocated for... Um, having parking spots that were actually closer to the building for women who were expecting because she didn't ever think about yeah. that until she was super pregnant. And she said that her pregnancies were horrible and she was so uncomfortable and she advocated for that. But she's like being in an industry that's male dominant, that that wasn't ever something that was talked about or even thought about. And she felt bad not even noticing that because she was experiencing it and they actually kept the parking spots. So that's really great that that's something, but like yeah. you said, like trivial, but also important. It's daily life too. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think women just because they are encountering the situations are more prone to finding solutions or innovative uh, solutions to solve these issues. So that's why I think uh, it is a matter of democratic representation, but it is also a matter of having uh, women working in these fields, having access to the resources and opportunities to bring in the change uh, that would be solving some of the problems. And I think you and I and um, 
all other women uh, viewers and listeners can come in with many other examples. But these are yes, just two. <laughs> so let's let's push for for having more more girls and women in in STEAM because honestly, just the numbers uh, are going to be saving the or changing the situations. Oh, absolutely! I even notice. With girls, even in my Lego um, robotics club that I'm hosting right now at different schools, it's so interesting. And I've seen this too in other clubs where the girls, they can definitely tackle the challenge, no problem. But they always, not always, but very often they add these artistic elements in the design part and the storytelling And just that little bit of creativity, not to say boys can't, but I've noticed that as a trend, especially where, oh, we need to have this part here so that the kids can wash their hands, or we need this part for the family. And so there's that element of that empathy and realizing how everything's connected together. So the next time you are doing a project with girls, listen to how they're talking about things because the way that they discuss their uh, projects and their ideas have a different flow than typically what groups of all boys do. And I don't know if you've seen that in your STEM clubs with your girls. Actually, I was uh, thinking whether to start the STEAM club as a girls club or not, but it was the book of Gitanjali Rao, um, An Innovator's Guide to STEM. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is hard to refer the uh, acronym, uh, that she kind of convinced me that the girls need a safe space in which they could be having the freedom and feel they have the right to to tackle uh, problems a bit differently or at their own pace or if they want, however they want, because it might be that sometimes um, they don't know how to do it and they are questioning and They are turning the problem uh, to see it from different angles. And only once they have some sort of a deeper understanding, they actually work on developing the solutions where the boys are more prone to taking action, uh, testing and improving and testing and improving. There are different um, approaches to, to innovation that girls and boys take. And in the mixed class at this age, uh, just because boys, they also might feel more confident. They could be even taken more, more space. Girls could be feeling more intimidated, uh, and they would not get involved as much. So in the end, I decided to, to run a, a steam girls club. And I have to say that there are issues that they are bringing to the table that I think pertain to their experiences. And I'm super happy because um, in my opinion, um, it's not only about having the the skills and knowing how to work with the tools in the case of girls, just because, uh, as I said, they are a minority in all these um, fields. They also need to feel they have the confidence and the right, and they need constant empowerment. From my point of view, from my gender studies, from my reading, from my parenting experience. Uh, yes, it, it kind of led me to, to believe that we need a bit of an innovative approach with, uh, with STEAM education that takes this um, empowerment into account. I agree with you. And I actually ran an all-girls STEM club at my school my first couple years in that position. And it was a Wonder Workshop, Wonder League competition where it was robotics and building to solve the problem. And that was really important for me to start off with that because the kids didn't really have STEM anyway as a class, but having that where it was girl specific and just really, and I even recruited some girls where they didn't actually sign up. I sought them out knowing (laughs) that they would I really wanted to push them in that direction. So if that's something as a teacher, I know it can be hard if you're teaching all the kids in the school or you have your own class. Maybe if you're a classroom teacher, you do a girls STEM club, like a lunch club, and you do it once a week. Or um, you do run an after school club because I think those connections where girls are empowering other girls too, like we're empowering them as the teacher, but also them empowering each other is so important for them to learn at a young age. 
so that they can yeah. be supportive and like it's healthy to yeah. have good disagreements and come to a conclusion. And so it's really teaching them those soft skills that are essential in whatever career they decide as they grow up. What are you doing in your club? What are your, what kinds of things are you guys doing in your girls club? Well, uh, it's uh, fresh. We've just started this um, year. So this, the school year started in September. And it is actually open to uh, girls uh, from the sixth grade. Also because my little one, I have two uh, daughters. So my little one, she's a sixth grader as well. Um, so yeah, I kind of had this double agenda on one hand, um, to put my ideas in practice. On the other hand, to create this entourage in, in which, um, my, my daughter and some other girls, they feel safe to develop their kind of interest in science and get to play with the tools and get to experiment. Uh, so. Yeah, we started by, um, I started by introducing the girls to Gitanjali Rao, and they were very, very surprised that a girl almost their age, well, they are 12, she, and Gitanjali was 15, uh, at the age she, she received the, the prior. Um, but they were really impressed that you can be an innovator at such young age, and we discussed about the problems that they encounter in their real life, and which would be the ones they would pick uh, for which they would like to work further on developing solutions. And uh, I was really surprised that most of them, in one way or another, said, said the climate change. It's either fighting pollution or uh, mitigating uh, climate change effects or um getting to improve the rights of the of the children in Africa working in in Mines also a bit connected. So we kind of agreed together, took a bit of a um, democratic approach. Uh, so we took climate change um, as a topic. And the girls um, wanted to work on developing scratch uh, animations or videos through which they would be kind of inspiring their colleagues on uh, what they could be personally doing to mitigate the climate change effects. Like, really, don't take the elevator, um, uh, compost the um, organic uh, leftovers, uh, don't buy uh, uh, new clothes, uh, sell your games and board games on Vinted. We have here an application, uh, an app that is, is quite so successful for uh, commercializing uh, secondhand items, all sorts of ideas that they came up with. Um, and this is what we are currently working on. But just because it was Halloween, we had a very special edition inspired also by your podcast on um, how to work with pumpkins uh, for STEAM activities. And we developed uh, pumpkin batteries, which was super, super cool. <laughs> So let's see. <laughs> uh, definitely send pictures um, if you have any, and we can put them on here. This could be a whole blog post for you. You could write a blog post about each of those. <laughs> I do have, I I do have tons of pictures because the girls they were honestly so involved and so happy, and it was for real a steam project because uh, it was the electricity part, the surprise part in which we got to connect the pumpkins. We had four pumpkins we connected um, in, in a series and they add um, all together. They had enough voltage for light up a LED uh, light. And then it was actually the whole um, pumpkin battery experiment for um, a pumpkin competition, pumpkin contest at school, and they created a poster. So there was also the artistic uh, aspect of it. And they were really, really, really well together. And um, I was super, super proud of them. Uh Unfortunately, they did not win. But they are winners to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a prize for them. Oh, yes. that's so sweet. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they love it. How many girls are in your group? Well, uh, this is it. I was not mm, 
so sure how to take it. Uh, we started with five girls. Um, and I was a bit bummed, but then I thought, well, this is the reality. Um, it's true that the, the club was announced a bit uh, late. So three weeks after the school started, many, many of the kids have already enrolled to some, um, after school activities. And there was also this perception that, um, it's not so much for girls even if it's dedicated to girls. So there is this issue that girls do not see themselves uh, as working or studying or being passionate about this area. Um, but I'm super happy also because I do not have the hands-on experience. I don't know if I would have handled a bigger number of girls. So five uh, is already quite a lot, to be honest, because I'm not I'm not their teacher and I do not impose um, the authority of a teacher. And sometimes it's really, they it's after school and they are so relaxed with me that uh, I have to say, yes, I, I need to improve also my way of getting them uh, involved and keeping them focused on what it is that we are actually working on but the battery experiment was a super hit i think they love this kind of activities oh definitely and they're going to talk about it more and more like you said it's not they don't see themselves in this type of club which is why you should have that so you're doing great work yeah and having a small amount you can for you as the teacher you'll learn the your tips and tricks and i'm sure more girls will want to start joining and they'll talk about it and um, I mean, it's great you have your daughter in there so she can help promote for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was actually not sure how she would perceive it because it's mm. the age at which, you know, kids, they tease each other. So I was very gentle, to be honest, really asking her if she wants to join, if she's okay with it. And she's a big, big supporter. I think she does a great job <laughs> talking about the, the STEAM club with, with the other girls. And she seems very cool and at ease with it. So it, just because she's uh, so authentically seeing herself as a STEAM girl, I think it, it is convincing for the other girls. And to be honest, I've also read in a study that this is what makes the difference. So they looked back in the study um, and asked the, the girls that they graduated and become engineer, what exactly made them uh, choose this uh, career? And they had some some options. And among the most important factor, it was also this, that they saw themselves as engineers. They pictured themselves in this role. Besides having good math skills, having a good impression about education in general, an interest in natural sciences. So I think it's very important to normalize. That's why I, I say that we have to give the girls this this feeling that they have the right and they to be in in this area in this area they, and they don't need to be special in any ways i think also the parents expect the girls to be geniuses uh, but it's not the case any normal girl can be a steam girl and yes i know what i'm talking about <laughs> since i have <laughs> a graduate uh, a girl who graduated aerospace engineer at home so yeah <laughs> she's very normal <laughs> yes, yes. Well, tell me, okay, you told us in the book club, um, the STEM teacher bookshelf, a little bit more about this. And your daughter is actually going to be helping me with a project that is aligning with exactly what you're saying, helping kids see themselves in STEM. Um, so you have done some things at home since that you're so passionate about this, but also just to help your daughters. Uh, what types of things have you done for your daughters, because your daughter didn't just step into aerospace engineering. I know you were doing some things at home too to kind of help her see that could be a possibility for her. And also your little one too. You told me you, you do things with her as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I, I am happy that I've overcome my negative experience in high school where I encounter a misogynist teacher who was telling us, the girls in the class, you are beautiful but stupid. Well, those were the times. Oh many, my many gosh. years ago. Yes. 
and of course, it steered me away for good because I was studying math and physics high level in, in high school, but encountering on daily basis, because I had math, day, daily classes of math, uh, encountering this type of an attitude, it totally steered me away from uh, studying sciences or math. Uh, but somehow uh, it, it remained with me and this appreciation for, for math, I passed it on to my daughter. Actually, we were um, solving problems together as a mother-daughter activity, uh, helping her out to participate in some math competition that she wanted to to score the highest um, 100, 100 points. And she had very good math skills and confidence in her math skills. So there is a bit of a difference because girls nowadays, they do have good math skills, but they don't have uh, the confidence. So I think it, it makes a, a big difference. Other than that, both myself and my husband, I think we took a non-gender stereotypical uh, bringing um, approach uh, in a sense that um, she got really exposed early on to robotics classes, uh, coding classes. Um, she was taught how to fix her bike uh, we treated her <laughs> not really as as a girl that should be in a certain way, but as a, a child that should have many um, many opportunities. And we opened up, I think, in this way, uh, and her interest in in STEAM. But that onwards, it's her own merit for keeping up. Um, for not being intimidated. Um, of course, I was coaching her and supporting all the way, but sometimes it's difficult since you are the only girl in the, um, or there is another colleague <laughs> uh, in the computer science class or um, later on when she um, decided she wants to study um, aerospace engineering to be among the few girls in in uh, in her group or in the hangar or whatever project it can be deterring so this empowerment i think it's very important it played a huge role and i wanted to learn or to think in retrospect and see what can i learn from this experience of raising my older daughter that I can apply with my little one, but she's totally different. She's an alpha generation child, um, digitally native. Uh, she doesn't do things just because I say so or give uh, the example of her older sister doing stuff. So I had to take a bit of a different approach. So with, with her, again, very gentle, giving... Um, examples, uh, providing opportunities to do things together, um, just to play along, to tease her interest, but no real push, uh, stepping aside if I see that it, it's something that she doesn't like. So totally honoring um, and respecting her, her interests. And so far it worked well. Um, and this is what I'm writing about yeah. in my STEAM parenting yeah. blog. Yeah. This this generation is totally, totally different. And mm -hmm. <laughs> we raise them, I think, to have a voice, to be aware yeah. of um, who they are and their interests. And you cannot overstep that. So you, I think, yeah, uh, STEAM education has to take that into account, their interests. Yeah. Oh, you're doing... You you're a great job, mom. Like, I love that. Like, <laughs> if I ever had kids, like, that's like, be like, I'll call you up. Hey, can you, you can just like raise yes. my kids for me? <laughs> can you just do yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, every, every, every kid is different. And I, I mm -hmm. got to see this with my girls. Uh, so you have to, you have to adjust. But, yes. you know, there are some principles. Um, and I also know that I don't want to do things that I wouldn't want to be done to me. <sighs> so I think that's, that's the basics. <laughs> yeah. You're doing great. And you're sharing that with other kids in the school community and that's going to grow. Yeah. Uh, what are all the different projects that you have going on that teachers and parents can check out? Yes. I, I've mentioned that I am 
documenting my parenting experience with my little one on a on a steam parenting blog um I am fully admiring uh, the pace with which you are developing <laughs> content and podcast. I am still catching up, oh, good. <laughs> but I, I would love, I would love to to uh, to write and post um, with uh, an increased frequency at the moment. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's still a project to to grow. Um, I've started, as you also said, to talk with parents at school. So I'm, um, I'm involved. I'm a school counselor. I'm involved, um, uh, with a community. I held presentations. Um, also because I kind of became aware of maybe 10 small improvements that we could be or micro adjustments to our parenting. Um, I've made a, a presentation, um, at the, um, spring international steam summit. I always seem to, to forget the, the title. Um, and the presentation is on the 10 things, uh, or 10 steps you could be taking for a more intentional steam parenting. Mm. I'm sure that many of us are doing all these. Uh, just to give you an example, um, not um, restricting uh, Steam uh, or connecting Steam only to Lego robotics coding. Steam can be, just because of the use of technology, can be um, any area. Something I said earlier, do not expect your girl to be showing uh, signs of genius um, she can be very, very much herself with her interests in unicorns and uh, pink fairies, whatever. Take her from uh, where she is and just uh, provide her with an opportunity to know more. So include visits to museums in your travels or in your weekends routines, make experiments, uh, integrate scientific vocabulary um, or um, prone uh, uh, conversations uh, that lead to, to more inquiry. So there are many small things we can do um, that in a way lead to a big change. So I think this is... Um, one of my uh, my strengths, my interests overall, um, having, as I said, my background in gender equality, the um, uh, reads, uh, the studies, um, and then my parenting experience, it kind of led me to believe that we need this innovative approach in STEAM education, where we make the girls feel they have the confidence, uh, the right and the skills to pursue a STEAM career. And I'm working on this innovative concept of a STEAM education. I will, I will see how I will be uh, able to develop it further, whether, yeah, um, present it at conferences or just study more, but it's definitely uh, an, in an interest, a, a passion uh, for me. So, yeah. This would be um, my interest. I'm talking about it on my blog, on my Instagram. So I think um, your viewers, parents, teachers, uh, if they have questions, interested, uh, want to reach out to me, I'm I'm fully open. I'm really, really happy to be part of this team community. Well, you are definitely walking the walk, not just talking the talk. You are doing great work and you should be so proud of what you're doing. And you're doing this in such a kind way and not, um, you're, it's just like a very welcoming way in the way that you are presenting this where it is so needed and it's not making people feel bad, but making others be aware. And we'll have the links to everything in the show notes. So the International Steam Summit um, by Wonder Workshop, you might still be able to watch it. I think they leave them up. It's free. Yeah. 
You might still be able to actually yeah, go yeah. and watch it. Um, but then if not, you guys have to follow her on her blog and Instagram and see what where she's presenting next. So um, I appreciate all the work that you're doing, Alexandrina, and um, definitely a topic that isn't talked about enough, um, whether it's in the parent community or even in the STEM teacher community or teacher community in general. And so I'm so grateful that um, you are a guest on our show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the invite. It it, it felt really uh, like a long needed conversation between the two of us. <laughs> and I hope that uh, many more will follow. And thank you once more for everything that you are doing. It, it's really inspirational. So much of my work is also uh, thanks to you. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. We need we need a big community to help keep this yeah. going in our world. So um, we, yeah, I can't do yeah. it alone. So we need we need everybody <laughs> to um, raise up their voices and keep doing the great work in our STEM world and overall world for kids. Yes, and this is how we will be actually bringing in the change that we talked at the beginning that it's so much needed so yeah yes. let's uh let's promise each other that we will be talking in five years from now and <laughs> hopefully with improved statistics and <laughs> yes more positive outcome absolutely and i can't wait to see what your little one ends up doing how she pursues her dreams and use her talent so I'm excited to hear She'll be way older in five years. So she might almost be done. With high, she'll be close yes. to be done at high school. <laughs> so I can't wait to hear what she ends up doing um, too. <laughs> yes, correct. That would be a perfect timing. So by by then, I think she would have to be decided on what she wants to study because now she is so much gravitating between uh, different careers. But honestly, I don't feel how to say, I'm, I, I'm not worried at all. I feel like I'm doing my best. Um, I'm opening up uh, her interest in STEAM. And as I said, many of the areas, they are potentially STEAM areas. Um, so whatever she's choosing or will be choosing, it's going to be fine. She's going to be great. Well, I can't wait to hear and I know we'll keep in touch over the next yes. five years, but I thank you so much again <laughs> for being on the podcast. You're amazing and keep up the awesome work that you're doing as an advocate. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast. I would love to connect with you over on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore or send me an email to elementary STEM Coach Podcast at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out my website, NaomiMeredith.com, to see all the show notes from today's episode and shop my K-5 STEM resources. Any questions you have, needs for resources, or ideas for episodes, get in touch. I'll talk to you soon.